when we're young, to live and dream are one and the same. The impossible seems anything but. And the choices are infinite. We are the kids out of making things. The journey begins. We are the kids that call us matchstick king. Our path not yet clear. What lies ahead? Fear. Hope. Faith. Pain. We are the kids that'll never get old. Will we fight? Will we climb? We start over again. Will we strive we start over again. for greatness? Elite 11 is quarterback heaven. We are the kids that so good. Love this. Love this. journey we take them on for a week, they start seeing life through a different lens. We don't have to walk alone. Together, we can become brothers in arms. This is the 2014 Elite 11. This is our journey. A journey through the Pacific Northwest inspires awe. The landscape is beyond impressive, as is the current landscape of the American high school quarterback. Just outside Portland, Oregon, 18 of the best high school quarterbacks compete in a week-long summer event held on the Nike campus called the Elite 11. Part camp, part competition, completely unique. It's the premier quarterback development process in America. I think it's bigger than that. I think it's become a tribe. It's become a place where coaches have a chance to take their life experiences uh, and pour into these kids so they don't make the same mistakes as players uh, and in life. Former quarterback Trent Dilfer is the head coach of the Elite 11. His career was the tale of two players, a Super Bowl champion and an NFL journeyman. My vision of Lee 11 is definitely through the lens of my journey. Recognizing that life is very unpredictable. And at different times in our life, God reveals to us where our purpose is. I don't know if I can define my purpose in one sentence, but I know this is part of it. Across the country, quarterbacks compete in regional camps for an invite to the Elite 11. Hundreds of kids are evaluated in a process that is painstaking and precise. I took this over four years ago, and the number one reason I did was because I grew up obviously playing football, playing other sports. I was very coachable. The problem with that term coachable is who is delivering the message. I set out to train an army of coaches that deliver the right message, that mentor them, not just coach them. You submit tape, coach's recommendation. You're approved to come to one of the regionals where you'll compete. That performance, that competition, will then be synced up with what we see from your film and then a third layer is kind of the vetting process of who you are as a young student athlete. Uh, are you the type of person that we feel will be a future influencer? They really didn't do too much. Yeah. 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 Yep, yeah. Normandy's up there. As the regionals conclude, coaches gather in a war room to choose the 18 quarterbacks that will be offered an invitation to Oregon. All right, let's start here. Josh Rosen, arguably the most gifted of the class, 
makes throwing a football look very easy, off the charts, intelligent. Um, but again, a guy that needs to understand that it's a lot more than the stuff he's recognized for. Josh Rosen is a California kid, aiming to become a Renaissance man. He's open to anything, mainly because he excels at nearly everything. Is Josh a genius? No. <laughs> but he's a very, he has a very interesting mind. He was always imagining himself a few years ahead of where he was. So he is very strategic in that respect. I love football for what it really is. It's a sport, it's a game, and that's why it's so much fun to me because it's meant to be fun. It's chess match on steroids. It's, it's incredibly strategic, but sometimes you can just say, like, screw the match, I'm faster than you, I'm gonna run by you. I view his football career as a pastime that's um, secondary to his education, an endeavor that will take him a long ways, but not his permanent endeavor. For something to be the most important thing in your life, it has to be able to last a lifetime. Football ends at some point. I'm using football to get into college, meet new friends, establish connections, and, and just have a great time playing a sport I love. We got a lot of kids that can throw for 4,000 yards without blinking an eye. Blake Barnett, a kid that has both stature, he's got zone read traits. He'll be one of those projects that has raw horsepower that we need to kind of help him evolve as a pure passer. Horsepower on the ground and firepower in the air. Blake Barnett lives life like he plays football, wide open. I like to do some things that are kind of adrenaline junkie. Makes you feel like I'm living, I guess you can say. I would say he's a controlled risk taker. When he was younger, he was fearless. He's tempered it down, but he still likes to have fun and, and good for him. You know, I think we all should do that. It's kind of terrifying at times, just, just knowing the fact that you're in a good airplane and you look out and you're pretty high up and just to, to free fall, it's an awesome feeling. He's never been a follower. He's always been a born leader, ever since he was little. He needs to have a little bit of fun and some normalcy. Most of it's semi-safe, I would say. Woo! Woo! Obviously, I know I have to stay healthy for, uh, for my senior year and for my college career, but uh, I think it's fun to do some stuff like this before I head off to college. If Rosen and Barnett are favorites, Ryan Brand is a long shot to even make it to Oregon. At barely 5'10", he's undersized and, in his mind, undervalued. Good. I've always been one of the shorter kids, so I remember my first practice, one of the coaches was like, oh, you seem too short to play quarterback. That's just been his journey, his story, um, since, since a little kid. He knows his path is not going to be the same as everybody else's. The X factor for him is there is nobody that's going to outwork him. Band resistance, lift weights, pull sleds. These are all the things that we had to do to uh, acquire the, the, the skill that was required to play football. Come on, Ryan. Come on. Come on. I play with a little chip. I mean, the underdog, that's always fun. Everybody roots for the underdog, but uh, obviously I have faith in myself and I have faith in my ability. That's okay. Good. That's all right. I went to three regionals. I went to Chicago, D.C., and Columbus. Columbus was the final Elite 11 regional. Yeah, I put so much into this. One, five. It was mind-blowing that I made it that far. For guys that aren't 6'4s, they want to go dark. That's how the game is played. And I know you can do it, but this drill was made for players like you. One. I won the Golden Arm for all three regionals. Nice, Ryan. Ryan, really good, man. I know that's not easy for you. Really good. I've stayed up late at night thinking about this kid. I see no reason why Ryan Brand should not be an Elite 11 finalist. He's as good a high school quarterback as there is, except he's 5'10". 
look, there's nobody loves chip on the shoulder guys more than me. No. I was one. Um, but he stands maybe 5'10", and when he throws, he throws around 5'7". If we're gonna take a 5'9 half quarterback, he's yep. he's gotta be the best 5'9 half quarterback in the history of high school football. The irony of him is, the Super Bowl champion just carried a trophy off the field, was only 5'10". And I know this kid loves Russell Wilson, and it makes sense, right? When you're Ryan Brand, you have to find some of you identify with and say, I want to be just like him. Well, good for Ryan Brand that he picked out Russell Wilson and said, that's the dude I want to be like. I was kind of anxious, kind of sitting, waiting. And finally, I got the tweet from Russell Wilson. On behalf of head coach Trent Dilfer, it is my honor to extend the 17th Elite 11 Finals invite to Ryan Brand. He put his heart into it, and uh, no, I just put my arms around him and hugged him, and you know, talking about how proud I was. Right. Okay. Yeah. Push. There you go. I'm used to hearing the same talk. I'm used to the same doubt by everybody. Push it over hard. I just put it in the fuel tank. Just keep driving, driving. <laughs> the underdog intrigues me because of the fight in their human spirit. And it's not that I have a, a soft heart for underdogs. I just think I appreciate the journey an underdog goes through. When I step on the field at the 11, Push it. I want to be the best quarterback out there. Yeah, not a lot of guys doing that kind of workout, baby. It is time. 18 high school quarterbacks from all over the country arrive in Oregon. 11 will be named elite. All will be tested. The journey begins. Six, three and a half. Five, nine and a half. 206. 206. Cool, cool, 208, 209. <laughs> 189. That's all right. Hello? Hey, Dad. What's up? Hey, we just uh, got to the hotel. Me or him or anybody in our family or anybody you know that we're friends with hasn't been a part of something big like this, so. I just, you know, wanted to let them know how things were going. All right, man, compete. You gotta be the toughest one day, you hear me? Yes, sir. Every quarterback here, they think they're the dude. They think they're gonna win the Heisman, they think they're gonna play forever, and they think they're gonna make it to the Hall of Fame. But what they have never done is face true, true adversity in this type of environment. I realize that there has to be some moment where we really get to know something about these kids that they wouldn't share otherwise. I don't want to say break them, but take them to a place they've never been taken before. And uh, this year, I wanted to do it on the opening night. I wanted the shock and awe to come as soon as they stepped on campus. Just hours after arriving, the quarterbacks are taken to the Nike campus. What awaits is unlike anything any of them have ever experienced. 121 hours from right now. Standing right here, 11 of you will be invited to come up on this stage. That will be a tremendous honor for whoever gets invited up here. What I want you to understand as we start tonight is that will not be the victory. If there's one message you need to hear me say all week long, it's this. The victory is in the journey you're about to embark on. Trust me, this journey will be like none you've ever been on. It will change your life if you buy in. And it starts right now. Just to be at the headquarters of Nike was awesome. And then we saw the Marines there in the Army, and we were just like, oh boy, it's about to get real. I'd like to introduce you to Mike Irwin from Team Red, White, and Blue. All right. Our job is to help veterans transition from the military by keeping them active. But we're also known for leadership, and that's what we're here for today. Team Red, White, and Blue are comprised of military veterans who have served their country with honor. These men are patriots who understand the true meaning of sacrifice and leadership. Around here at Elite 11, we have a phrase, at the edge of uncomfortable is where greatness happens. So the first thing we try to do is see if we could take their legs. And that was a 1.8 mile rucksack run around uh, Nike's campus. 
and it was a race. Now this is a pack that isn't just 10, 20 pounds. This is a pack that's about 50 pounds on their back, full of these thick, massive rocks. I wasn't expecting anything like that. First day, just going at it right away. Everything's a surprise to me. The surprise element was halfway through. Somebody in the squad pretended there was a casualty. So I had to carry that man the rest of the way as well as their rucksacks. Running through the woods with sacks on our back and having to carry each other is pretty tough. It's pretty hard, to say the least. And that was the point, is that when things get chaotic, can you quiet your mind? They finished that, and uh, then we took them on a, a 1.3 mile flag run. And each kid carried red, white, and blue around Nike's campus. Now that is an image right there. How's that, TD? That's a pretty awesome image right there. This was one of the coolest things I've seen in the four years of Lee 11. It was a special experience that I know that me and the rest of the quarterbacks will, uh, won't forget for the rest of our lives. I was expecting a, an extreme workout, but I wasn't sure when, and I wasn't uh, expecting it to come the first day, so that was a big surprise. Do you think you're done? Oh, no, of course not. What's next? <laughs> Some more hard work, because it, it gave us an itinerary. What we did was not on there. <laughs> it's just getting started, too. <laughs> The competitor's quest has just begun. The Elite 11 is more than making great quarterbacks. It is about defining leaders and building men. For this night will be a journey of the mind, body, and soul. Part of the game that you admire the most when you watch these guys play on Sunday is the strategy. That's what this next mission is all about. The task in front of you is to build a fighting position, just like that. They had two minutes to examine the existing bunker that had been built. Fill the sandbags and then take them 200 meters up this slope and recreate the bunker that they had two minutes studying. You watched every single team either take a minute and pause and say, okay, Here's your job. Here's your job. Here's your job. You know, no, 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 Brady, Brady, me and you doing this, he, he take, he, they taking the bags. We'll do the construction once we have enough bags over there. Or just start doing work and it was chaos. Fill them up quick. Get them up the hill. Trade off responsibilities. Use your brains. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11. So how's it? That was the hardest part. It was the mental aspect. We had grit, you know, we were out there working, we we're grinding our butts off. But uh, best leaders come with a plan. We didn't come in first because we didn't have a plan to start out with, and that's something that we really took back from. Are they done? No way. Uh, there was a buoy about 150 meters out in the water, and they had to take the Zodiac raft and get it out around that buoy and back. What I forgot to mention is that it's 10.30 at night. Life jackets on at all times, on land and in the water. There has to be at least one person in the boat. Oh yeah, by the way, there's no paddles and no oars. Some of these quarterbacks don't know how to swim. You wanna talk about being uncomfortable? It's exactly what happened. I mean, I live at the beach. I'm in the ocean a lot. I felt like that was a kind of an area that I could, I could excel in and take a leadership role. So we're mostly on the boat, but our feet are just in the water. And I know from sailing, going, the more pressure there is in the back, the faster you go, rather than the front, can you just dip down. Ben Hicks dubbed the leader. All of a sudden, he really didn't lead. Josh Rosen took the thing absolutely over. And away we went out into the water. Here they come. I was pretty confident going into it because I'm an all right swimmer. 
Then you got in there and it was cold. The life jackets were tight to where it compressed your chest and everything, and breathing was very hard. Quarterbacks, you know, we always have the ball, so when you're in a pressure situation, if you just calm yourself down by breathing, it can do a lot for you. That's one thing I'll take away from this. Keep going, keep going, kick! Ah! We have a couple teams really struggling, and a few getting it. Go around it, go around! Yeah, there you go! You saw some just personal wills, just guys that would refuse to not let this be successful. You saw some tacticians, um, but you really saw it was the confident ones that thrived. That was uh, life-changing. I really learned a lot about myself and just how much more I can go. When my brain tells me, no, you gotta stop, and you just fight through it. Brady, help me up here. Let's go. Get up. Get up, baby. This is some real life test and making sure that, uh, that you can really work through anything and just getting out here and being able to be around these guys and working together with them is just showing me a whole different aspect on football. Get it back on the shore, and then the kick was they had to take it 250 meters up the shore. Come on, boys! Putting over our shoulders with about 10 pounds of weight vest on. And you're running, running, running. And feel like your leg's about to give out, but then, you know, it's something inside you. So you say, keep going. It made, you, made, made you mentally strong. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. What? You can catch him! No. 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 He said he doesn't have it on his shoulder. Let's go! Good job, baby. Good job. Good job. We ended up getting first in that challenge, and, and I'd like to think that I did a big part of it along with the help of all our teammates. Team on three. One, two, three. Team. Team. Yeah, these kids thought they were coming to a summer camp, and they're getting like incredibly in depth life lessons taught to them uh, the first night. Oh, and by the way, it's now 11 30 West Coast time, and some of these kids got up at, you know, four o'clock in the morning East Coast time that day. So some were close to 24 hours without sleeping. But I wanted to teach them a lesson that I felt was uh, paramount, and that's about grit. It's a combination of passion and perseverance. So you guys think you're done right now, and you're not. Your laces tied up. Overtime. One more workout. One more opportunity to test from within. One more chance to discover greatness. It was 10 times more than what I expected. I learned a lot though. It was tough, brutal, but even with the guys in my group, you know, I felt so much closer to them. It was a, it was a cool bonding experience. I had, I had an awesome group and I, I thought we did pretty well. It was pretty phenomenal, kind of having that epic achievement moment night one because now we get that out of the way. So I don't want to say we tear them down, but we really have the opportunity to get four and a half days to build them up. That's a great way to finish. All right, let's get home and get to bed because tomorrow we actually get to touch football. Yeah. yeah. Daybreak. Day two. The quarterbacks are weary and worn from the night before. Yet at the Elite 11, greatness waits on no one. Just because you had a somewhat difficult night doesn't mean you need to sleep in. Look, this is not some summer camp. You gotta wake up and you gotta get after it. Come on, boys. It's time to wake up. Your wake-up call, sorry to say. What's good? <laughs> it says we're gonna be home by, I think it was 11 o'clock. <laughs> we didn't get home until 2.30 in the morning. <gasps> Late night, early morning. We got back to the hotel around uh, 2.30, and I went to bed around 2.45, and we ended up getting up around 6.45. Let's get ready to go, TG. We got football today, actually. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. uh -huh. <laughs> The competitors have yet to touch a football. Today, that changes. Everything changes. The football field is the ultimate proving ground. Another step 
on the journey. Okay, so this was the vision of Elite 11, was to take this incredible environment that we call football heaven, give you the best coaching, the best mentoring, the best opportunity to grow exponentially, mentally, emotionally, physically. You're a little tired. Yesterday was hard. Get through the day, full tilt, high juice, pumping. This is not summer camp. Not on my watch. There's a lot of other things out there that I call the sandbox. Go play in the sandbox if you have fun. If you want to be great, come to Elite 11 and give me everything you have for five days. Every throw counts. Compete with yourself. Every throw. Growing up watching the Elite 11, I know that everything's a test from how you throw the football to how you throw something away. So I'm just trying to go through each thing and just be on my game and everything. You're gonna throw that speed, Ricky. That ball needs to be right here. It's been definitely challenging. It's not the way it's drawn. If you're gonna throw it that way, he's gonna come here. The ball's gonna be halfway there. So a better finish out here. Ricky Town struggles early. The playbook is challenging. Designed for the mind of an NFL quarterback. To succeed, one must adapt quickly. Playbooks, it's pretty legit. It's about 170 plays. It's pretty complex stuff. Pass, hold, it's here. I got nothing, right? The playbook's intense. Coverages, plays, just really understanding the concepts studying out non-stop. Gun tough left to Jet Brady. Trying to own a playbook in, in two weeks is, is pretty tough. We were familiar with some of the concepts. But the wording was just different to us. Motion to blank. This right, gone right, wide version, pump, Z China. Frank right, Fox too hot, Winston. My playbook isn't the best playbook ever. This is very strategic what I'm asking them to do. You're getting two yards from the back end line and crossing. Your coaches back home may have a better playbook than this. Now that matters to me, because what they're being asked to do is to buy into this system. The Elite 11 features state-of-the-art technology, like e-coaching, to further the development of its young athletes. So, if you look right here, ball, defender, and here we go, we got the body right in between. That's the spot that we want to be in. Come on, answer faster. Let's go. Virtual labs are designed to test quarterbacks' reaction time while reading defenses. The concepts are complex and difficult to master. But success on the screen leads to success on the field. Great ball. Oh, that's oh, yeah. it! Oh. Yes! Nice and just! Yes! Nice, Brady. Good ball, my man. Nice. Third. Third. For many, the playbook differs from what they've been taught in high school. And Josh Rosen is hesitant to embrace the system. He is yet to buy in. I feel like Dilf would be happy if I like, was like studying my work right now. Oh, work oh, inside. Oh, right. Oh, God. Did you give this enough time? Uh, kind of. Josh Rosen's supremely talented. He has great stature, he's a good athlete, got a ton of arm talent, he's very mechanically sound, and a brilliant guy. He's the big engine, true raw talent. Rosen, he makes it look the easiest. Just kind of excited to get out in the field, throw the football around with some of the best athletes in the entire country, and uh, just take it for as the journey it is. You know, he's a great quarterback, everyone knows that. I think he's number one or two in the country right now. Josh Rosen. Oh, so beautiful, so nice. The hype around him is absolutely justified. So go. Good, beautiful, Josh. Just make it look easy. But I think he outthinks the room sometimes. The thing I don't like about the West Coast offense is they don't like throwing deep unless you're in the red zone. It's like, you can run that post from anywhere on the field. So I think the challenge with Josh is gonna be to get him just to let go of the way he's done things and buy into the way 
things need to be done here. Go right off his ass, get in there. Still same discipline that your ice start. Here it doesn't mean you're throwing it, but your ice start on it, so you get to see if he wins. If not, come back into the deep white. Josh has never done it this way. Because he's so smart, he's thinking through, well, that doesn't make sense to me. I don't, I'm not a huge fan of the whole pure progression thing. You gotta let me go through my coverage reads. Why, if that guy over there would be open, why wouldn't I throw it to him? Because I care about you doing it a certain way so that on third and eight, when they don't give you the easy way, you'll be disciplined enough to go through it the hard way. This is always gonna be the conversation we have, is I, I know you see it, okay? okay? And it's not a bad answer, but when it's a this type of play, it's a pure progression play, gotcha. I want your eyes to give that a chance, right? Yeah, yeah. Tying your feet, your eyes is getting five steps into it and still be looking at okay. it. Then get back to that and you would have timed it up better. Look at that, time's up so much better. Good block, good block! Time's up so much better. Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, Drew Brees, Aaron Rodgers, they all do things their own way. I'll see a lot of different systems, get a lot of different input from a bunch of different coaches and find what works best for me. Really good, really good. Good job, buddy. To put the concepts that we've learned from the playbook onto the field and be able to actually run and experience it as it develops. It's been a tremendous experience to be coached by the best. X, just run this lamp to win. Score a touchdown, right? Best lamp you've ever run in your life. Good job. Really good timing. Nice job, Blake. God, it was beautiful. Blake Barnett thrives in practice. He has all the quarterback traits, including size. Height is the one consistency of nearly all competitors. Except for one. Ryan Brand. Yet he competes with the Giants' bravado. Brian Brand is everything you're looking for in terms of an athlete, his arm, oh! his leadership. Hey, let's all work. Let's go. Work on three. Work on three. Work. Poise, his confidence. He's exceptional in every area except one. Height. He's 5'10". Where's my quarterback? Oh, they are. Come over here. So, Z, Josh Rosen, Ricky Town, Blake Barnett. I mean, these guys are big dudes, and he's the little guy. That's why you're out of bounds. Boy. I'm a natural born competitor. I feel like I can compete with the best of them. Ah. Even in the year of Russell Wilson winning a Super Bowl, people find it hard to believe that it'll happen again. We're going to create your own way of playing in the pocket. That's what Russell's done. Because you're looking for lanes. We're Josh Rosen. He's looking over everything, <laughs> right? Uh, he just keeps fighting, chipping away, grinding out, knowing that he's got to do the little things better than the 6'4 guy. There we go. <laughs> nice ball. I have faith in my ability, and, and I feel like I put in enough work. Just keep pressing, keep diving in any chance I can get. After two days, the first war room is assembled to give an honest assessment of the competitors thus far. Tough talk, frank evaluations, difficult decisions. The initial ranking of the Elite 11 must be made. Blake Barnett. He was just really consistent. He made the routine plays routinely. You know, he had him laughing. He was just like relaxed. It was like he's on the driving range. Josh Rosen, who is the most talented in this group, he's uniquely gifted. And we don't always appreciate unique traits. Yeah, my group completely tapped out. Yes. I mean, within the first 15 minutes, except Josh. And, and granted, he's physically gifted, but he was such a leader yes. and a compassionate one. He listened, he wasn't pushy, he didn't want to step on anybody's toes. But for instance, in the final drill, when we were in the lake, it's Ben's drill. He's the leader. Ben didn't do anything. Josh was trying to advise him on what to do, and then he just took it over. He's a Mensa. He's off the chart smart. He pissed me off like five times today. Purposely would ask a question to challenge me, but to also show how smart he is. It's a little bit of insecurity, and I just need to make sure that everybody knows that I know my stuff. Yep. Nobody's asked me enough questions. I haven't had enough opportunities to tell everybody how smart I am. When he affirms those things, he'll mature. He needs to learn this week 
that there's a whole nother game out there, right? And it takes people like us that are willing to understand where he's coming from. Not agree with it, understand it, and still coach him through it. Ryan Brand. In the year of Russell Wilson, let's call it, and I was a Russell Wilson doubter, you no longer have to have the measurables to be successful if you're uniquely gifted in a few other areas. And I think Ryan Brand is exceptional in all the other areas except height. Who's the most surprising person that's not in the top? Like a lot of guys that are on my list right now. Ricky Pound showed the most command, but uh, the mistakes he made were, were just big time mistakes. The Elite 11 strives to be more than a camp, more than a competition. It aims to create a culture, one that defines what it truly means to be a quarterback, to be a leader. We won't ever compromise the football. This is the finest uh, environment for quarterback development that's out there. But that's not why I'm doing it. A big part of Coach Dilfer's experience here is to be great quarterbacks, but be uh, people that are going to be successful in life. My training philosophy, the curriculum which the Elite 11 is built off of, is very holistic. This is built in to get your bodies right to actually play football today. You'll feel great afterwards. This will flush all the crap out of you. You want to keep the arms in line with the shoulder joint here. Oh. Yeah. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Say hello, Lats. Hello, hello Lats. baby. A lot of the times, yoga can be seen as uh, something far off up in the clouds. Really, for us, yoga is a true test of focus. Stand tall, stand strong, take your arms overhead, breathe it. One of the things we did is we pushed them into the level of uncomfortableness. Because right on the edge of uncomfortableness is where people grow. See you, DeAndre. The way you are in yoga, the way you are in seven on seven, is being evaluated. We found out who truly could quiet their mind. Great job, Francois. Nice. He's totally in it. He's focused. Where they have the opportunity to really pay attention to that little voice inside their head, supporting them to go further, to go deeper, to dig in. Yes, breathe. Can you breathe here? Breathe or things that get in their way. You're just gonna float down. The doubts and the anxieties and the fears of not being good enough. Look at Ben. Reach up to the arms. Ben Hicks. So when we put young men in uncomfortable positions, the ability to be calm, feel the energy, and then be able to drive it right back into this moment. And we watched as they were truly listening and building on the principles being taught by Coach Dilfer, Mike Gervais, and the rest of our staff. Body becomes Dr. Michael Gervais, who arguably is the world's leading uh, human performance psychologist, I spent a lot of time talking to them about confidence and how confidence is trainable. You guys are on a journey right now, and the outcome is not in your control. If you attend to the outcome, if you attend to the things that are not in your control, you're going to find yourself losing your own sense of power. Of this journey, what you do get to determine is your own experience in it. And the center of this is being able to trust all of your preparation, all of your training that's gone into this moment. And the idea is, can you trust yourself enough to stand in this moment with conviction? There's kind of this irony, right, that you have a girl up here talking about manhood. I was fortunate because my dad is the best man that I've ever met in my entire life. My four older brothers are impeccable men, and I joke that I'm a connoisseur of good men. But that being said, this will be the most important question that you ever get asked, and the most important question you ever answer for yourself. Who will you choose to be in this lifetime? The role that you play, especially being in this room, you are the less than 1%. I hope that you excel in football, because my God, are we in need of some positive male role models in this world. And it's not just little boys that you have looking up to you. Be the guy who has the daughter who stands up on stage and proclaims that there is no better man than my father. Be that guy. Football is what you do. It's not who you are. Your job is being the best man that you could possibly imagine being and having the guts to look at every guy on your team and saying, this is the bar. What kind of man will you choose to be? I pray that he's awesome. The person you are in your life is much more than the game of football. 
and you can't let it define you. You know, you gotta have great character and have a positive influence on those around you. Nigu. It stands for never, ever give up. It is a mantra for an organization on site that supports children with cancer. Quarterbacks connect with the kids and discover the true power of their influence. I heard you're a UCLA fan. <laughs> we have a guy named Josh Rosen committed to UCLA. The kid I was with, his name's Matt. He, uh, he's actually a UCLA fan, so I think that may have had something to do with uh, me being paired up with him. He's an awesome kid, going through some pretty tough times. Really puts your whole life in perspective. All right, you guys ready? Perfect, look at that. My friend was Sapphire. Uh, she was a little shy girl, but man, her, when she smiled, it was, it lit up the whole field. <laughs> it really humbles you. You know, you have to set back sometimes. And that's something that's new to me and something that I really do appreciate. We got a winner. Wow. Awesome. Winner. It just makes you thankful for what you have. I mean, he's battling through cancer right now and I'm out here throwing footballs. I'll definitely remember that for the rest of my life. The real achievement is these kids are gonna have tremendous influence in their life. Let's leverage our platforms and our influence to make this world a better place to live. And uh, these kids are getting it. The Elite 11 attracts some of the biggest names in football. To serve as on-field mentors and to offer real-world advice. We got a little star power. Blake Bortles and Taj Boyd both drafted this year. I'm sure the guy next to me doesn't need a big introduction. This is Sam Bradford. Future Hall of Famer, Tony Dungy. Now your feet are tied to your arms. And if your feet are in rhythm, you're gonna make a good throw. And if your feet are out of rhythm, it's gonna make it really hard to get the ball where it needs to be on time and accurate. My son was actually here six years ago as a high school player and it was a fantastic experience for him you got a great opportunity don't waste it take advantage of everything you get you've got some men here who have some great knowledge about the game but you also have some men who have some great knowledge about life grow athletically academically socially and spiritually and you're going to be successful one particular guest draws added attention. And a few of the kids get starstruck. Hello. How are you? Good, how are you doing? See you, bro. I'll introduce myself. My name is Drew. I just thought I'd meet you. How's it going? What's up, man? How are you? Josh. Nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you. And after that, they had the... Let's go, Boston, be in the air! Enough talking! We're not in summer camp! I want a sense of urgency now. We're lollygagging around the field. It's a celebrity walk-off. That was unacceptable. I'm personally putting my time on the line so you guys get better, not so you get pictures and autographs. It's a freaking joke. As the week wears on, some kids revert back to high school ways, breaking curfew, arriving late. So we missing. Trivial to some, but unacceptable to Coach Dilfer and his staff. I could get really angry and start yelling and screaming. That's going to do no good. I've learned this as a parent. So hear me when I say I'm very, very serious when I say that not one more incident. It embarrasses the hell out of me. Because I got up there last night and told those 160 opening athletes what the expectation is and what exactly is going to happen. And if they don't see it from you guys, then my message means nothing. The quarterbacks can't be complacent. On day four, the best skilled position players in the nation arrive to compete in an upcoming seven-on-seven -seven tournament. But first, they're all tested in an NFL-style combine called the Spark, which measures speed, agility, and power. We get the 160 best 
high school football players in the country. I mean, these are the guys that will make up NFL rosters one day. So when the players get here, they go through spark testing. They're going to find out their speed, their agility, how explosive they are. The spark rating will ultimately give us a score in terms of how athletic, how powerful, how explosive every one of these student athletes are, including quarterback. Just so you guys know, and this is true, I was 238 pounds and ran 466. I don't think it's outrageously important with your spark rating as a pocket passing quarterback, but kind of curious to see how I'd stack up. B. Cooks! Come give some of these slow-ass quarterbacks some 40 advice. I'm the fastest man at the combine. You want to see uh, a 40 in slow motion? Who's up next? I'm a dual threat quarterback, so I'm already listed on the athletic side. I might mess around and stride out a 4-4. On the eve of the seven-on-seven -seven tournament, yeah. there is another war room to further evaluate and rank the competitors. Blake Barnett, go ahead, Craig. I've had a chance to talk with the kid a little bit. I think he's very humble for really how talented I really think he is. The sky's the limit for him. I mean, he's out there just spinning the ball today, and I can't wait to, to coach him up. Josh Rosen he made some great throws. I think he likes to challenge guys with information that he knows, whether it be something we're going through in here or on the field. Do you think it's rebellious or do you think it's just, he just thinks he knows more. He just thinks that's a better way. Everything is a discussion. You know, we'll run a play, well, this happened. I'm like, Josh, we gotta move on to the next play. And, but I thought he was sharp today and uh, I think he's gonna do really well. With Brand just, um, his eyes, as we, as he kept moving through the day, his eyes were in better spots. It was about the, the execution of the throws a couple times. I mean, I feel for the kid because I think he's in a big spot and he's right on the cusp of grasping the moment. I don't want to completely write him off because I'm going to give him a chance to kind of learn from it. Game day a seven-on-seven -seven tournament titled The Opening. All week has led to this. A chance to compete. A chance to succeed. A chance to achieve greatness. Teams have been set, and the quarterbacks are the captains of these teams. Like we call it football heaven, this incredible environment created by The Opening. All of the preparation and meetings and playbook and concepts, it all comes to fruition. And for some of them, it's a fish coming back to water. Bray Wyatt has three touchdown passes. Bray oh, yeah, just threw another one. Yeah, baby. That's unfair. Woo! You can't stop that. It's just unstoppable. Perfect throw by Ben Hicks. You made a steal right now? Got it. Got it. Drew, that's a dime. Now let's go. Drew! Yes! That keeps him in. That keeps him in the alive. Oh my gosh. Oh, that was a dime. Waller's doing a really nice job. Brandon, that's good, Brandon. Perfect, man.
Jared's in the 11, he's not gonna win. He's gonna finish sixth, fifth, seventh, fourth, you know what I mean? Alex has a chance to play his way in. We have some guys that are just outside of the 11 that are gonna have an opportunity to play their way in. Uh, we had one on my team and Alex Malzone. Came in and played great. <laughs> and ended the whole tournament on an interception in the end zone, which is debatable on being his fault or not. so much psychology going on around all of these amazing athletes. How do they handle the strenuous situation? It's a major part of the evaluation for the Elite 11 finalists and the top quarterbacks in America. Darnold Forrest does seem. Brady White's pass intercepted. Final score, Vapor Carbon 18, Flowers 12. I just blew a chance to win. Okay. Yeah, I blew the Elite 11. <laughs> You didn't blow anything, man. And the most beautiful thing about it when I see your eyes tear up, bro, is that you have this dying love for this game. It's gonna break your heart time and time and time again. Pressure. Conflict. Adversity. It's all part of the Elite 11. How do the quarterbacks handle success? Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it! Let's go. How do they handle failure? Josh Rosen experiences a bit of both on his journey. Oh! Hey, was it two or was it quarters? It was Tampa two. Then who picked it? The safety? No, the corner. He tried to back shoulder. He that late? He's been one of the, my fascinating studies this week. Just gotta lay that ball. Well, no, I was throwing it to the outside guy because he completely, he just, he ran into, what's his name? Hey, the more you do it Charlie's way, the better you play. The more you get outside of Charlie's way, that's when we're watching the film going, ah, he got away with it. But long term, he won't get away with it. Okay. See what I'm saying? Now, I'm not half as smart as Josh Rosen, but I, I got myself in a lot of trouble as a player, uh, overthinking stuff. Um, and I don't want to see him make the same mistakes. The biggest uh, struggle right now for the quarterbacks is to put the concepts that we've learned from the, uh, the playbook onto the field. There's the tactical uh, aspect. The windows are, are tighter. Uh, you're gonna see man coverage tight man, you're gonna see some disguise coverage. You know, these are, we have NFL defensive uh, players as defense coordinators, Willie McGinnis, who's one of the great players I played against in my career. Jam, jam, hey, I want peanut butter and you know what I want with it. He's drawing up defenses to stop this passing game that is my playbook and that these kids have learned. Yeah, you know, somebody wanna eat out here. Ricky Town struggled earlier in the week and continues to struggle early in the tournament. It seems as if his Elite 11 story is destined to end in defeat. Hey, let it go. This is for everything. Let it go. You've seen all the sports movies. Let it go. Don't think. Just play, baby. We got your back, OK? I used to tell at the time all the time, if we give up 40, we need 42. Okay, so what? I got you, I got your back, we got your back. Just go out there and have fun, let it go. Sure. All right, you got your man. Your eyes are telling you the truth. Take it, right. if it's there, take it, all right? Sometimes greatness can be found in simply moving forward. Ricky Town refuses to stop fighting. Doing so, he discovers a passion for the game he loves. Ricky's dealing. Hey, Ricky's dealing. Something about getting hot at the right time. So we go here, so maybe sit for a second and run out. Gotcha. Yeah.
most radical turnaround I've ever seen. That's what we've been talking about. That was it right there. Bottle that right there. The discipline, the eyes, the structure, the accuracy. I mean, that, that was awesome. Great job. You should be so proud of Rick. He is, he's, he's been so his life, here. just that understanding how to let stuff go. Yeah. I mean, he, he's never been taught that. It's unbelievable. He's, it's so awesome. I really, it's been really so cool. It. No, it's been great. It's been so awesome. Ryan Brandt entered the Elite 11 as the underdog. Game day is his chance to dispel doubters and prove he belongs with the best. I believe that the game is changing. When you're exceptional, like Russell Wilson in every other area, and you have the artistic part of you that understands your challenges, which I'm seeing Ryan do and I'm encouraging him to do it, I believe he'll be a success. Go, baby! Go, baby! Go! All right. Let's go, let's go, let's go! There's still some who have different school thought. I try to look him off, you know, trying to get the first one, though. Should've waited the second one for it. My bad, y'all. Come on, Ryan. Come on, Ryan. Say go! Brand just threw another pick. He's not seeing it at all. We honestly, you know, are trying to groom guys that are going to dominate the next level and have an NFL caliber ceiling. Here's the problem is that as soon as you say NFL caliber ceiling, nobody buys into that with Ryan Brand. As Ryan Brand experiences growing pains, Blake Barnett shines, emerging as a front runner for Elite 11 MVP. This is how you start a drive. So good. Zip, 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 zip. Oh, yes! Woo! Oh, perfect. Holy smokes. That looked a little bit like surgery. <laughs> you throw a perfect third down ball, hits a guy in the chest, gets picked back. You don't, let, you don't flinch, you get right back in, just execute the offense, make a big throw in the post. That was beautiful. Thank you very much, Coach. Thank you. The tournament final offers an unexpected matchup. Once considered an afterthought, Ricky Town has risen to become a legitimate contender. His competition, the can't-miss kid, Blake Barnett. Who will emerge as elite? Here we go, guys. Play hard, right? I mean, it's a big, big stage. The lights are bright. Uh, there's a lot of pressure. Hey, let's go. Right here, right here, right here. Let's go. Town continues his hot streak early on. Right. But some receiver drops. <laughs> and big plays on defense hinder his team's chances for victory. So everybody else has been playing us, man. Right. Everybody's eyes are on you now. Okay. So yeah. the progression is that much more important. Your right. eyes and feet, it's just, boom, I don't like it, I don't like it, check down. Stay disciplined. Hey, it's gonna have to be you. Ricky, Ricky, Ricky! Ricky. Right, hey! Bounce back, bounce back. Ready, they go! <laughs> Blake Barnett. He once soared through the sky out of an airplane. And on this day, his passes soared through the sky in an aerial assault on the opposition. Take what they give you. Good, good, take what they give you. Hey, drop that dime in there, big boy. Oh. 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 
Good catch, bro. That was a good catch. Let's go. Let's come back from that. Take out. Go, 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 EQ. Go, EQ. Yeah, we just ran an ADR slam. ADR slam. Right there, ah. Hey, Blake, come here. Blake, come here. Hey, I just want to be the first to tell you you're the MVP of the 2014 <laughs> You fired up? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm so proud of you. Thank you very much. You did much. such a Thank great job. Much. You did such a great job. I mean, this whole team is here. It's how you played the position. I'm so proud of you. This has been a great day for you, man. It's been a great week. It's been a great week. So proud of you. The final Elite 11 ranking is to be decided with one final war room. I'm going to start with Ricky Town. Nine touchdowns. A pretty remarkable day by Ricky. He comes out today and just everything was, I mean, I couldn't have asked him to play much better. He's why we do this. Tuesday in the lunch line, he just said, man, this changed my life. I'm like, oh yeah, it's gonna, you're gonna be a lot better player. He goes, no, it's changed my life. What did Rosen do to keep himself here? Every day there was something, 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 something. And today it got a little dicey and he said, yeah, I've learned to keep my mouth shut this week. His talent is undeniable. His IQ is undeniable. He is a hard, hard worker. He's just a personality that's abrasive. When we look at the big picture that everybody around him is telling them that what he's doing is enough, and he is good enough, and we're kind of accusing him of being 17. He's a good dude. Um, He's just learning and growing, and he's in an accelerated space mentally than maybe some of us. I think he's leaned into everything we've, we've asked of him to do, and maybe he didn't jump through the roof, but the dude jumped. The quarterbacks gather. This is it. Who will be the Elite 11? Hundred and twenty hours ago, I promised you guys that you'd go on a journey that you wouldn't forget. That would change you. Um, a journey that if you bought in, if you went through it, that you discover greatness. Because life is so much bigger than football. And uh, football is a huge part of it. And it's a great part of it. And I encourage you to attack it with everything you have. But you'll still be empty if you attach greatness to whatever awards you receive. I truly believe that the victory was in the journey. Uh, and that's probably what I'm most proud of. You're the 18 best quarterbacks in the country. Seven of you in the next few minutes will be disappointed because getting back to the awards is, is called the Elite 11. And uh, we did go through a lot so we could identify the 11 that handled this week the best. If I invite you into the 11, you stand up on that patio. If I don't, could you please walk over and step aside? Understood? All right. Well, Blake, um, pretty impressive. I think uh, you are definitely a kid that through the process we knew was incredibly talented, that your ceiling is incredibly high, um, but somebody that we really wanted to see be put in a cauldron of competition and you thrived. Um, it was a phenomenal week for you. You should be incredibly proud of yourself. Uh, and I'd like to invite you to be part of the Elite 11 fraternity. Thank you. Rick, I was hoping they wouldn't put you number two in line. Because <laughs> this is probably where I'll start crying. 
um, I love seeing people change for the better. And you are carrying something. I don't know if it's because you're a five-star blue chip recruit, you've been super successful. In my years of doing this, I don't know if we found a kid that's Bob Moore in. What you said to me the other day at lunch about this change in your life, not just the football, makes me so incredibly proud of you. And it's up, put a cherry on top, you went out and you put your team on your back. You stood up and said, I can be trusted. Trust me, I will always remember your week. As long as I do this, I'll always remember your week. Please stand up. The decisions are difficult. Some must step aside as others are chosen. Ten quarterbacks are selected. Two are left. One spot remains. Josh Rosen or Ryan Brand? Josh, you are the most talked about person this week, by far. People have said a lot of things about you. Um, good and good and I wouldn't say bad, but good and puzzling because everybody keeps coming back. Does he think he knows more than us? Because sometimes that's the aura that you put off. Now, I'm gonna give you a hall pass on that one. I don't think that's how you sit back and go, he doesn't know what he's talking about. I honestly don't believe that's what you do. I think you aren't listening to the most important things. And the most important thing I wanted you to learn this week was this theme of journey. I think you could have won, which wouldn't have changed your life. Um, and your lack of absolute buy-in um, just allow you to make it. And I don't want your career to be, I just made it. Because you have the talent to be Andrew Luck. You have the talent to be Peyton Manning. You have the talent to be one of the best in the game. Don't get stuck in doing it your way so you end up being Trent Dilfer instead of one of those guys. Don't let the stuff that held you back this week stop you from being that good. But you were good enough to be in the 11th. Congratulations. <laughs> Ryan, obviously you've done the math. Um, I know one thing I will never regret, that I invited you to the 11. Because in this world of recruiting and offers and all this stuff, um, people only want to see that and 6'2 plus and you didn't have a lot of offers and you're not 6'2". And I don't care. I still believe you're one of the 18 best quarterbacks in the country. The thing I wish I would have seen different and it cost you from being the 11 was that there were throws to be made every single rep that I've seen you make in the regional process and I've seen you make on film and for some reason something stopped you from making them this week. This by no means is a failure for you. Um, you're a special kid. You helped us as a staff realize that the Russell Wilsons and some of these guys are not aberrations. That there are other people out there that believe I'm gonna be a quarterback and I don't care what other people say about me. I'm just gonna say yes, sir, and keep getting better. Keep getting better, Ryan, because you can be really darn good. Thank you for this week. All right. It was definitely heartbreaking that I didn't make it. If I'm not number one, then that just shows that I have a long way to go. Greatness. There is no ultimate destination. It must be rediscovered each and every day. The 2014 Elite 11 is over, but the journey is just beginning. All we really hope to do is plant that simple seed in all of these quarterbacks 
about life being a journey. You know what I saw? I saw a young man having fun for the first time in a long time. Yeah, absolutely. This whole camp and, and this whole experience, it really puts your whole life in perspective. We'll talk a bunch, okay? If you want, I'll, I'm always here for you. Awesome. I love you to death, dude. Awesome. Well, you poured your heart and soul in this, haven't you? I know. You're going to be successful as a quarterback. I promise you, if you continue the things you're doing. Okay? The journey they went through on the Elite 11 is just a microcosm of this life journey. And they have just a clearer perspective. All right, Ben. Yes, sir. All right. I believe the journey is the victory. I was so hungry, you came to feed me. I was a wandering, you came to lead me. You came to lead me. Oh. I got best hands out here. Look at these palms, look at it. I got mitts. Look at this. Look. They call me Mitts Romney. Mitts Romney. <laughs> <laughs>